Hi, my name is Lawrence, and I'm a Christian, and I have a genuine question for all Muslims out there. And if you could stitch this video, I'll greatly appreciate it. And here's my question. Why is the Quran the only historical document in history that claims that Jesus was, in fact, never crucified or that he never died? Um, and why is it that you guys hold to such a belief? Why, why do you guys hold to that truth? If you guys could stitch this or whatever, I, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah. These I must say is an interesting question. And especially coming from a non-Muslim, I must commend you for that. I understand that Christians will go any length to defend their belief, especially when it comes to the crucifixion of Jesus and his resurrection. This belief system is so important that Paul said, that if Christ wasn't raised, then our preaching is worthless, so also is your faith. So you see, I understand that your faith is tied up with this. And how dare the Muslims, how dare the Quran, come 600 years after to claim that Jesus wasn't crucified, Jesus wasn't dead. Talk more of being raised from the dead. But you see, Islam is not about what is convenient or what pleases so and so person. It is just after the truth. So your questions are, is the Quran the only historical document that claimed Jesus wasn't crucified? The answer is no. When we look at the apocalypse of Peter, we would see that Jesus was actually there during the crucifixion, but they did not see him. He was there with Peter on a tree, and Peter saw the whole thing transpired. In this apocalypse we read, Peter said, I saw him seemingly being seized by them. And this goes hand in hand with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah An-Nisa, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ And they did not kill him. They did not crucify him, but it was made seemingly to them. So it was made as if they actually killed Jesus, but in reality, they killed someone else or they crucified someone else. So let's continue. And I said, what do I see? That it is you yourself whom they take and that you are grasping me. So Peter is talking to Jesus, surprised and was like, is this really you? Glad and laughing on the tree with me. So he continued. And is it another one whose feet and hands they are striking? Meaning, a resemblance of him being humiliated, beaten and striked. So he continued, The Savior said to me, He whom you saw on the tree, glad and laughing, this is the living Jesus. But this one into whose hand and feet they drive the nails is his fleshly part, which is the substitute being put to shame. The one who came into being in his likeness. So as you can see in the apocalypse of Peter, he was certain that someone else was made in the likeness of Jesus and then crucified. So let's move forward and see if we can find this person in another gospel, the gospel of Barnabas. I understand that the Christians don't really accept these gospels. But however, it is important for us to also look at these gospels and examine what it says about the crucifixion. So the gospel of Barnabas regarding the crucifixion, he said, Whereupon they condemned two robbers with him to the death of the cross. So they led him to Mount Calvary, where they used to hang malefactors, and there they crucified him naked for the greater ignominy. Judas truly did nothing else but cry out, God, why hast thou forsaken me? As we can see in the gospel of Barnabas, Barnabas mentioned Judas, that Judas is that person that was replaced with Jesus. So Judas took the resemblance of Jesus and the enemies took him for Jesus. And in fact, Barnabas went further to say, Judas did nothing else but cry out loud, O oh God, why have you forsaken me? This statement of Judas saying, God, why have you forsaken me? Reminds us of what we read in the New Testament today. We see that Judas wasn't the one that said so. But it claimed Jesus said so. And when you look at it critically, you would agree that Jesus can't say something like that because it doesn't befit him. According to Christians, Jesus knew what he was coming for. He knew what he bargained for. So someone like Jesus coming to say, why have you forsaken me? God, why have you forsaken me? Doesn't really fit the narrative. Rather, this statement can only come from someone like Judas. So this is the claim of some people. Let's continue. So Judas truly did nothing else but cry out, God, why has thou forsaken me? 
seeing the malefactor had escaped and died unjustly. So Judas saw Jesus going freely. But deep down, he knew he had assumed someone else's resemblance, which is Jesus' resemblance, and he's been crucified unjustly. So Barnabas continued, Verily I see that the voice, the face, the person of Judas were so like to Jesus. And now you see this is also confirming what the Quran said. It was made similarly to them. So the people present then were so convinced that this person is Jesus. So Barnabas continued and said, He is so like Jesus that his disciples and believers entirely believed that he was Jesus. So like I said, everyone was convinced that this person crucified is Jesus. You now see the reason why the Quran had to come and the Quran had to make this claim that Jesus wasn't crucified. The person crucified is someone else. So as you can see, the Quran is not the only historical document that claimed Jesus wasn't crucified. We don't really agree that the Apocalypse of Peter or the Gospel of Barnabas are 100% correct. But when it comes to the crucifixion of Jesus, it has elements of truth. And we see that it goes hand in hand with the narrative of the Quran. So the second question is, why are the Muslims so convinced that Jesus wasn't crucified? The first is, the Quran said so, and it brought a lot of evidences to justify the fact that Jesus wasn't crucified. Secondly, there are elements in the Bible, both the Old and the New Testament, that testified Jesus could not be harmed. Amazingly, when we read the verses of temptation, we would see that Satan tried tempting Jesus by taking him to a height and asking him to jump. So in Matthew 4, 6-7, we read, Now the devil is speaking, If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. So in this verse, the devil is quoting Psalm 91, trying to reference Jesus back to a prophecy in Psalm that there will be someone that will not be harmed. And this person is said to be the Messiah. God the Almighty is ready to save him from any harm. So let's go to that verse in Psalm 91. Psalm chapter 91, 10 to 11, it reads, No evil will befall you, no plague will approach your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. So from this verse, we understand that the Messiah cannot be harmed. Because it is said in the Old Testament that nothing would harm you. So how can you reconcile between this prophecy in Psalm and the prophecy in Isaiah? Some of you might claim that these two prophecies are referring to Jesus. But then it's like calling a square circle, which is totally illogical. So it is either the prophecy in Isaiah is false and the prophecy in Psalm is true, or the prophecy in Psalm is false and the prophecy in Isaiah is true. But we believe or we are inclined more to the prophecy in Psalm. The reason is, in Matthew, as I quoted earlier, Satan tried tempting Jesus using that prophecy in Psalm. And again, we would read in the Bible that Jesus prayed that the cup should be lifted off him. It simply shows that Jesus never bargained for all this. He came with the truth and people tried killing him because he had spoken the truth. And this is similar to every other prophet that came with a message to their people. They tried killing him or they tried killing them. So Jesus is no different from all the other prophets. Even Muhammad was chased from his hometown. There are attempted assassinations, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from their hands. So also Jesus, and this is our belief, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Jesus. When Jesus prayed for safety, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him. So in the Bible, there are sufficient reasons for us to believe that Jesus wasn't crucified. Rather, Jesus was saved by God. Secondly, if Jesus truly came to the world to save men from sins, then it doesn't make sense that he, at the end of the day, cries out loud, God, oh God, oh God, why have you forsaken me? Rather, this saying of, oh God, oh God, why have you forsaken me, befits someone else, not someone that knew what he was coming for, what he was coming to do. What makes sense is, God as the creator has the power to forgive, has the power to punish. When you cross beyond his limits, when you disobey him, when you do acts of evil, God has the sole right to forgive and also to punish. 
God is not in need of any human sacrifice, neither is he in need of any animal sacrifice, except if you wish to limit the power of God. This is what we believe. And that's the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about Adam and Eve after their sin of disobedience. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about Adam and he said, فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Then Adam received from his Lord words and he accepted his repentance. So we believe that Adam repented and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave Adam and to us there's nothing like the original sin. And we believe that everyone is born pure. This is our belief and this is our stand. And we also believe whoever reverts to Islam, no matter the amount of sin he has committed before, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive him. And it is as if you are as pure as a newborn child. This is Islam for you. Allah has the full power to forgive whom he wills and he has the full power to punish who he wills. We do not limit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to certain things. Because at the end of the day, you have to make up lies to defend a particular belief. Again, another lie to defend that lie. And that's how it goes. This is why most of the Christians can't agree on a particular thing. Some would believe that Jesus is not God. Some believe that he is just the son of God. And some believe Jesus is God himself. So as you can see, the Quran is not the only historical document that claimed Jesus wasn't crucified. I understand that other documents you might not want to accept them. In fact, even the Quran too, you don't accept it. But on record, there are others who claimed Jesus wasn't crucified. And these people might be eyewitnesses. Who knows? Secondly, as Muslims, we believe because of the Quran said so. And not just that, we've seen elements in the Bible that choose Jesus cannot be harmed. And this is what the Quran stood by. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him and we believe he is going to come back at the end of time. In fact, it is one of the major signs of the last hour. So we believe Jesus is going to come back, have a family and die peacefully.